recruitment participation in Hajj, past, present, and future. There have been a lot of uh, talks of recent. And I've decided to stay and listen to this paper and the discussions. They will take about 40 minutes. Now it's time for prayer. It's also time for lunch. Now what I want you to order me is to allow us to go for the prayer and lunch, and then all of us come back here for this paper to last about 40, 45 minutes, both presentation and then discussion. Then some of us will leave before the next uh, paper by Professor Badmas Nara Yusuf. Or you want us to stay, it's 1.15 now, according to the clock I'm seeing from, I don't know whether it's correct. Okay, it's 1.15 now. And so, so many of you are travelers. If you stay up to two o'clock to join your Zohar and Asal when you live here, then do your lunch and then go. Or we break, go for lunch, prayer, and then come back. Which one do you want? Because I want the government people to wait. The honorable uh, member here, the president of the minister, minister and SGF, I want them also to be, to listen to this uh, paper because they are talking of importance of government participation. You have just heard somebody saying that government should hand over to two operators. So let me take, let me hear, you know, consultations. That's why I'm, that's why I'm your servant. Consultations, I will hear from one from a, from a sister, two from my brothers, and from the brothers, one, uh, one uh, scholar, one, uh, the problem is that everybody here who is a scholar is also a government picking. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> We're all government picking, that's why. So let me see elders from the front, elders. Uh, let me hear from the sisters first. What do you say? Yes? Eh? You say? We continue for, and then close at two o'clock. Yes. Okay, that's from our mothers. That's their, that's their voice, all of them say so. Now, from the fathers. Malan Kaviru Gombe. Eh? Continue and finish for two. Okay, that's Malan Kaviru. Yes, uh, Professor Elokene. Continue. So both Izal and Ariga agree. <laughs> So me, I implement. That's consultation. So thank you very much. Uh, with this, uh, I will continue my chairmanship. Because I know our great uh, speaker, the next speaker, I know him very well. And I know I can control the minutes he's going to spend. But you have heard everybody say we'll close by two. We have 45 minutes. As the lead paper presenter with two others, I think the other, only two people came. Or oh, the other people were the four. Why is that, Mazada Abdullah Ebagi? Can I know? But he's over here? He's not here. Malam Ahmad Ojula Pei. Why is he? Other discussants. Barrister Hassan, Chairman Oshun. Is he here? Okay. Put your, put your mind, my lady. Okay, I think that's what, uh, that's what the Chairman Hatch Commission gave me. I'm reading a different one. Professor Aminu Sali Mikaido. I've seen so many people going out. I think, doctor, where's the doctor? This, this will need to go and see you. Because some people are going out to come back. Don't write the people? Okay, Professor Aminu Mika, you know what I'm going to go? Adam, you know what I'm I saw him. Professor Akinto, you know what I saw him. Olosho is not here. In China. Uh -huh. So the three of you, and plus the lead paper presenter, you share this 45 minutes. 
Sheikh Ibrahim Khalil, you have the podium. You are going to speak to us in how many minutes? Eh? So we we'll give him 20 minutes. If it's more than, if it's too much for you, you can reduce it. Then the other three presenters will give them 10 10. I mean, a discussion. I hope you permit me. <laughs> but is the, there are, how many of you uh, don't understand how the hands are? No, there are not many. There are many? No, there are not. Want, we have, have to, we have to protect Hausa. No matter how, to unless, protect. You, unless you get somebody to interpret. No, Professor Aminu Mikael will... Somebody to interpret what you said? Yes. No problem. Professor Aminu and Ashur. Huh? And Dr. Ashur Saini also, they can help. We go to conferences outside the world, I mean outside Nigeria, across the world. <laughs> and they speak in all languages. I will have to so I prefer to speak also so that I, I can express understand. myself. So if uh, Professor Amin will translate what he said, so that's your own contribution and discussion, is to tell us exactly what he said. Go back that. So you accept it? So, uh, Kamarin, the Ake Magana Chiwar, Aiking Haji, Aiki Ne, Koe Zama Kashum Hukuma, Kokume Zama, Mezama Kasa. To Idamuka Kali Abunda, Malo Muslim Chisukapada, Gamada, Tasaru Patur Rasul. And the Bena and the Sarupi, Nashuga Benchi, Kona Patawa, Kona Al Kali. A mother Abendesha put Jamaa, and the Bena and the Sarupini, the Sarupi, Nashuga Benchi, but the Sarupi, when they keep a Nashuga Benchi. Doming Malamena, Musilinchi, Kalitari, Tinder Kang Halipopi, Hazua Kang Umara. Zamuga Suni, what in the Siki Tafida, Al Amaran, Aikin Haji, Hakakuma, Lorura, Tewa de Kulum, Itamata Tilasta, Chiwa, Zama, Aikin Haji Hukuma, Tazama, Tana Kuladishi, Idamuga Kali, what then so Abu Bua, Musali, Matoki, Azumi, Kamarinda, Ibn Timi Aiki Chiwa, Idan Har Sanki Musulmi. Was mutane suka zo masa da ganin wata guda biyu ya rinjaye da guda ɗayan nan dole wanda sarkin musulmi ya rinjayar shi za dauka haka kuma tsayewa arfa hukuma ce take da iko a kansa domin masruq lokacin da suka zo wajenna na Isha radiyallahu anha suna yin sabani game da cewa what lens is in a gunning arpa that's a cassanchi rana kaza? A mouse kumusuna gunning a mural moon minina in a gunning lisabung bahaka ekiba. Tetchi lisabung a mural moon minina shini lisapi. When the dia air a villain arpa, but a runner the a mural moon minina echi at airba to be it ew arpa. Sanokuma idemuka kali chewa. Loka chin the Hukuma, Ada Chantiki Bado Umar Niba, one day the Yipatawa, I can hedge you at Au Hakokumashi, I keep you Umar Nuna, I keep you no Hukuma, ba one day is a Yipatawa, say at that we've been a Birabah Hakokumasala, Halibobi, Suni, what and the Siki, Jaraga Marsala. So Nay Demokoma Chikimu at Dada Mugachi were Loka chin the Akaneta, Hajaj bin Yusuf. Yazamaya to be the Aiken Haji, Akabashu Umar Ni, the Abiyaya Ibn Umar, Zamaga Hukuma Chidi, the Ampani the one. So no Kuma Idamaka Kali, not the Amir al Haji. Bowen the Aiken at the Amir al Haji, say Hukuma. 
sannan idan muka kalli cewa annabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam a rayuwar sa shine wanda yake gudanar da al'amura aikin haji duda cewa so biyu aka aikin haji a zamanin sa sannan abubakar a zamanin sa shi ma shine wanda ya ci gaba da tafida al'amuran aikin haji haka sayyidina umar haka kuma sayyidina usman sannan idan muka kalli larura da muke ciki a yanzu muka kalli halin da al'amura suke tafiya a da can lokacin da ejen suka zama sune suke tafi da al'amuran aikin haji mutane suna shan wuya na cewar wani ma sai aje a tafi da kudin sa musamman mutanen kauye a ƙarshe su zama cewa ba su aikin haji ba kuma kudin su su mula sannan kuma idan muka kalli cewar kamar yadda malamin musulunci suka ce duk wani abu da ya shafi jama'a to hukuma ake dora wa hannu ta kula da shi domin kuwa ita ce wadda take da iko da za su tafi da komai idan muka kalli sai wa arfa sannan muka kalli lokacin da sayyidina usman ya zo yayi salla raka'a hudu a salla azhar da al'asar za mu ga a matsayin sa na shugaba yayi wannan hukunci kuma ibn mas'ud yake cewa al-khilafu sharrun kulluhu ya zo ya bi umarnin sa dan me saboda yana shugaba sannan kuma idan muka kalli cewa lokacin da daular banu umayya take da kuma daular banu abbas duda sabani sabani da ake yi a tsakanin musulmi amma dai wadannan halifofi da shugabanni aikin haji a hannun su yake sannan kuma idan muka kalli bayanai da malamai suka rubuta littafi a game da umaraul hajj za mu ga cewa dukkan amirul hajji wanda aka bayar da labari za a ga shugabanni ne suka nada shi sannan kuma idan muka kalli bayane da malamai suke yi na cewar duk lokacin da shugabanni suka zama su ne suka tafi da shugabanci ko da zalinci ko da adalci dole su ne wadanda za a yi wa biyayya haka kuma idan muka kalli cewar a halin yanzu zai iya yuwa a ce a bawa masu haji na international yanci su je su yi aikin haji su gudanar da shi kamar da aka yi misali a ingila mutun ya zabi inda yake so ya biya hukun kudin sa a yi masa visa a yi masa komai za a iya cewa wannan yana da kyau amma dole sai an sami regulator regulator domin mutukar babu wanda zai dinga sa ido ya tsawatar a hali da muke ciki a yanzu ba hukuma ce take tafi da al'amura a yanzu ba to barnar da za a yi ba za ta riko ba domin kuwa zalincin da aka yi a da can lokacin da abubuwa ba su tabarbare ba aka waye gari aka dinga zalintar mutanen kauye da kuma wadanda ba su da gane al'amura sosai yanzu sai an fi zalintar su fiye da da sannan kuma idan aka kalli cewar wadansun nawaye nawaye da hukuma ce za ta iya dauka misali kamar Saudi Arabia za ta fi girmama jama'ar da suke karkashin shugabanci akan ta girmama wadanda suka zo ba a karkashin shugabanci ba sai dai kawai za a iya cewa lalle ne ya zama na al'amura su zama guda biyu wadanda suka saba zuwa aikin haji ta hanyar international a kara musu karfi da kulawa a kuma ba su cikakkiyar dama a kuma kara inganta wannan hanya kuma gwamnati ta zama ta rike na ta bangaren saboda me saboda talakawa wadanda suke ba su da karfi da za su zo su tafi da wannan al'amari ko da yake dr usman bagaji ya kawo maganar shehu radiyallahu anhu da sheikh al-amir radiyallahu anhu haka ne amma bambance bambancen wancin zamani ya sha bamban da wannan zamani kuma akwai wadansu abubuwa da suke canzawa saboda wadansu lurure lurure domin idan muka kalli yanda tsarin kasar mu yake da tarbiyar mu a da can to ta sha bamban da yanzu da haka dole ne yanzu a samu hannun gwamnati a abin da ya shafi harkar aikin haji fiye da a ce babu hannun gwamnati a ciki domin kamar misali mu da muke kan mu ne wadanda muka fi zuwa maka da yawa kuma mu ne aka fi samun ejen ejen da yawa a kasashen mu amma mun ga abubuwa da yawa da mutane suka yi na barna 
na zalinci sakamakon jahilcin wadansu mutane da kuma cewar a wancan lokaci ma ana jin tsoron hukuma bari ma yanzu da ba a jin tsoron ta sannan kuma idan muka kalli cewar aiki na al'umma kamar inda malam musulunci suka ce duk wani abu na jama'a kamar azumi hukuma aka ce ta yi shi sarkin musulmi shine mai iko akan haji in muka dauki haji aiki ne na jama'a in muka dauki titi aiki ne na jama'a duk wani abu kamar inda malamai suka ce in dai ya shafi jama'a ce za su sadu hatta sallan nan hatta sallan a hannun jama'a da take hannun jama'a a hannun gwamnati yake shi yasa ma a da can lokutan sallah sarakuna ne suka iya kance lokuta ko da yake wasu na kawo wani tunanin daban har ma waɗansu ka zo suke ganin sallar juma'an nan ma sai da izinin gwamnati in banda canjin yanayi da yasa da haka amsa a takaice shine lalle ya zama na cewa gwamnati ta zama tana tafi da aikin haji amma kuma a lokaci guda ta bayar da cikakkiyar dama ga masu haji na international tare da kulawa na biyu lalle ne a karantar da mutane su sani duk wani abu da ya shafi jama'a to hukuma ce za ta yi shi ba ta laka ba assalamu alaikum but in summary i think when he tried to tell us was to understand that all issues of ibadah that border on collective participation of muslims and he gave examples of fasting pilgrimage even salat require direct participation of leaders and government enforce compliance and to set guidelines and standards he mentioned that over the years since the time of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam through the period of the rightly guided caliphs and afterwards there was always the decision to appoint an amir al hajj by the government to, to look after the welfare uh, of the pilgrims so the right involvement uh, of government in hajj affairs uh, to take care uh, uh, should help to take care of the welfare of pilgrims as well as to curtail avenues of corruption that may be associated with allowing only private uh, carriers or private handlers to to perform the function i think i am not sharing this with the message that he uh he gave us in his presentation but in, my, in discussing what he said uh with permission of the chairman of the kg a minute to go a little bit uh, uh beyond this to give some additional uh point now a lot has been documented by scholars especially historians on the role played by various governments in nigeria since the colonial period as it relates to the organization management and control of hajj and umrah the paper by dr usman bugaji which he delivered today in the morning has actually discussed this issue and there may be no need to dwell uh, further on it to save time however when we are looking at the situation at present it is crucial to cite the progress made in improving the management of hajj affairs from the national pilgrims board period to the period when we had a committee led by professor led professor gwandu and now the national hajj commission given this scenario it is apt to delineate the role played by the government over the years as follows pre colonial nigeria no role at all largely was played by the government probably due to absence of central administration uh across the region, region called Nigeria and the very few people who undertook the hajj at that time now we come to the colonial period the initial fear of the colonial administration to engage in direct organization of hajj for the fear of allowing foreign uh infiltration or foreign contact with Nigerian pilgrims that may probably undermine colonial administrative policies but at any rate the colonial government eventually saw the need to support hajj operations in areas that they feel will enhance the welfare and security of the pilgrims now post independence administration uh, various administrations up to 1999 this period witnessed 
direct and massive involvement of governments at federal, state, and local government levels, in spite of the formal agencies that were set up at that time. Expectedly, there was evidence of corruption, wide-scale difficulties faced, uh, and wide-scale difficulties faced by the pilgrims. The establishment of NACO, which has drastically reduced direct involvement of government, except in the areas of approving forex, health and consular guidelines, allowed a lot of uh, independence uh, to the commission, at least to manage the affairs of the pilgrims. But I think some of the matters to consider for the future, maybe you want to include the need for greater consultation by NAHCO uh, and also by the government itself. For example, to sort out issues relating to appointment of Amir al Hajj, selection of carriers, and deciding on air affairs. Because these are issues that have generated a lot of controversies. And these controversies will certainly reduce if there were wider consultation. Dr. Usman Bagaji had mentioned the issue of drawing up a national policy for Hajj. This is very, very critical and important, and it should be emphasized. Because policies are easy to review. Uh, uh, for example, if you compare with laws, laws are a bit more difficult to review because they require uh, Act of National Assembly and so many other consultations. But policies can easily be re reviewed and they can also set targets, they are measurable, and they can delay to roles of government, of uh, all the other stakeholders, and it becomes very easy, you know, every year to come and see how far we have gone in implementation of the policy and what else we can do. And as His Eminence, for example, has suggested, there may be the need to have retreat almost every year. And it is this policy framework that will guide what will be discussed in the retreat. And there's also the need to donate government's financial support in areas of capital funding for capital projects, recurrent as well as overheads. And also to delineate the role of NACO in the areas of sourcing of funds and management of the funds. Maybe to have also a, a, a board of trustees that will manage the funds and that will make it easier for them to, to, to achieve their mandate. A lot, if you look at the law setting up the NACOM, there are wider areas which up to now they have not delved into, probably due to uh, over-reliance on, on, on government. Finally, there is need to set up clear guidelines uh, on criteria for appointing government representatives on, uh, 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 on NAFCOM board. This will make it uh, possible to de-emphasize the politics involved in the choice of those who will represent the government on the board. Thank you very much. Hajj exercise. Not completely, but at least limited to diplomatic and security services. Very simple. And government should leave the Muslims to decide their own destiny. We have the resources, we have the human capital, and we have the intellectuals. There are trained personnel who will handle Hajj affairs among the Muslims. Government should simply leave the Nigeria Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, NACIA, to organize Hajj through, you know, under it will fall NACO. And of course, when you look at the Muslim Ummah today, we have maybe less than five Islamic universities. Of all the private universities in Nigeria today, which are more than 50, Muslims have less than five Islamic hospitals that will take care of the needs of our women are lacking. We don't have female Muslim doctors enough to go around to take care. So we need the, we need the ability to prepare these and, of course, improve the standard of living and the organization of Hajj among Muslims. The Korean, of course, 13, 11, says, In Allah, Allah, you guys, you be coming, Hatta, you guys, you be enforcing him. We need to take our destiny in our hands. And, of course, zakat is not effective in Nigeria. It's not even practicable as it is because the, 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 the power, the sanction is not there. There's no sanction behind Islamic organizations to order the rich to pay. Zakat. But we have, if we marshal our resources, 
we are the largest population in this country today. Nigeria is now 193 million as at December 2016. And the Muslims are in the majority. Those going for Hajj every year, even if it is they alone that we are going to tax, and this is what I want to suggest, that every Hajj uh, traveler should be compelled to pay a minimum of 25,000 Naira each to the Supreme Council. This such fund will now be pulled into the uh, establishment of universities, Islamic hospitals, training of female medical doctors, as all those areas, and also, of course, promoting dawah, those areas where we, we lack the capacity. Then those going for Umrah will also pay a larger amount to the Supreme Council, 50,000 Naira is my suggestion. Because Umrah is not compulsory, it is not mandatory. It is, we go because we are interested. Once you go on Hajj once, that is enough. The rest is not mandatory. But if you are, go, if you are going on Umrah, then be ready to service the community, the Ummah, so that we can be empowered. Enough of this poverty among Muslims. Enough of this uh, of the suffering among vulnerable Muslim uh, Muslim children and Muslim women. Your Eminence, Salam alaikum. This topic, I think, the planners of this conference, especially the NACON, with the topic, seems to have concluded that government involvement in Hajj is compulsory and is fought with the name imperative of government involvement in Hajj, past, present, and future. I agree to some extent that where a large number of people are moving to, from a country to a country, to another country, surely there is imperative that government must be involved. And because of welfare of the citizens, because of uh, diplomatic and secular, uh, that is the councillor issues, we cannot do it without a government uh, involvement. And also there is already an act of parliament which established NACON. We have to look at positive aspects of government involvement, which cannot be overemphasized that the government must be involved. Then the negative aspect, those who are, have been calling for government should not be involved in a Haji matter at all. I think there are those who claim that Nigeria is a secular state or a secular country, which is not. God, Nigeria is never a secular country and is not yet, and I think cannot be. As far as we are here, the Muslim Ummah, with our large number, we are in this country. Nigeria can never be an atheist state, which will eventually be a secular state. The, and I'm sure that now, those who are calling for this, they have been satisfied, they have been given their own, and they have now turned around even to object that government should not remove their hand again because they are now beneficiaries. I think we are clear with that. Then there are other people who are genuinely clamoring for government that government should remove his hand. Why? My own observation is some scandals and maladministration and corruption within the system. And what I mean here, I don't mean NACO. And if we are talking of Hajj, I was a member, a geopolitical zonal representative in Hajj for about eight years and one year as presidential committee member. And at that time, 
there was always this question, who owned the pilgrims? And sometimes, misunderstanding between Nakon and state, who owns the pilgrims? State will always claim they own the pilgrims. And they, but outside the country, we know who owned the pilgrim when we leave this nation is Nakon. So this has made it, and state is the first that recruits pilgrim. How is state pilgrim board organized? I used to serve in Medina, and I remember in one of the meetings, the Saudi Authority tried to say that, yes, Nakon is organized, but the state needs to do a lot. And that was even brought when Nakon took over the Medina accommodation, and that brought a lot of improvement. So I am saying that states, and in Nakon also there was this issue of compliance. So if we want government to continue, there is need for states, what NACON we believe that there is need to register the state and license the states. Because many state pilgrim boards, especially those areas that their authority there are not Muslim and they don't know much of Hajj, and they are involved, the appointment, the administration, is nothing to write about. So the NACON should now move to second level. We say we have finished the transition period, which I think lasted for about four or five years. So those who say that NACON should start the really work. My slogan, which my colleagues knew that time, I used to say that La Haji Mabru be doing Iman Mabru. That brings us to Haji Awareness Program. Is Haji Awareness Program, can it just be achieved when you are now going to Haji? Or it should be all year round. Somebody who is going to Hajj and he does not even understand the proper meaning of La ilaha illallah, can he have Haji Mabru by just performing Tawaf and so on? He should know what is Islam before he can now end. That's the thing I noted is the issue of propagation. Dr. Bugaji told us in one of our meetings, I think in, in a retreat, that Hajj can constitute just about 80% of the performance of Hajj. What of other segments of Dawa, Irshad? These are where ulama are needed. If those managing Hajj don't even know what Islam in some areas, how can they really convey the message of Hajj? Because of time factors, I believe that government must remain, but they are also not only giving it to private people to organize, but both the private people and the government area. You should make sure you lay down guidelines of appointing people. It is only in Hajj. Other organizations, like uh, many government uh, parastatas, you cannot belong there until it's satisfied that you have the prerequisite to be members of such structure. So we need to take Hajj very serious so that Hajj can now be a very good body. And for money generation, I advocate with some local amendment, the structure of Tabung Hajj is a government board, but they're also self-sustaining. And they have a lot of money which they can use for developmental purposes. And under Hajj, we can even establish what my professor said, Hajj, establish universities and so on. Finally, I know, due to this concern, the last political reform was trying to recommend that we should go back, the government should hands off the Hajj. I don't know what they mean, but I know the Supreme Council also has a committee, which is now called is the party to that, had named that there, that is looking towards how Hajj can be, we can reduce government involvement in Hajj and make Hajj viable. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In reserving your questions, and what do you say? Oh, we'll wait until we finish all the, all the papers, then we talk generally. Eh? Eh?
As uh, our mothers, what do you say? We have five minutes more. Or do we run up because uh, there are two presentations? The High Commission would like to honor two leaders here with their, with their memento. That will take about three minutes. So what do you say? You know, I'm not, a, I'm not autocratic. I'm not, in, I'm, not in, I'm not a military man anymore. I don't give orders, so I request, whatever you say, what do you say? This is not military directive. Attachable? Yeah, well, some people here said attached that uh, questions, contributions on this topic would come later. So thank you very much uh, on your behalf. I would like to thank uh, uh, Sheikh for uh, Sheikh Ibrahim Khalil for bringing, uh, giving us very short but straightforward uh, talk on the need for government to always have a hand because he took our minds back to the beginning of uh, Islam and up to now. And uh, just in brief, he told us that authority determines what happens. He reminded us of the importance of leadership in whatever we do. And all of us are leaders, but there must be a central leadership. And in this case, we have a central leadership in the president of our country, who will tell me certain things. And the president now has lieutenants reaching out to them. When he wants to reach out to the Muslim Ummah, he reaches out to us, to the Supreme Council, we tell him. So I think that's what the, uh, the Sheikh was trying to tell us, the importance of uh, this. And so for him, it's 100% impossible for government just to say, Hands up, allow. And I shake Sadiq uh, Abaka. Uh -huh. So, Kaji, the Kedeshi, two of your opponents, you are now in the ring. You are saying government should hand over the airlift to you, to our operators. Our leaded, uh, respected Sheikh government said government must have a hand in whatever it is. And that's the importance of leadership and whatever. So, it's left for you to discuss uh, some of this. Then our three discussants also brought up some few issues about maybe poverty level that people should contribute who are short of uh, Islamic, Islam dominated universities and whatever. Well, these are things that uh, you discuss, uh, you present papers at, I believe, different uh, forum than this one. You are talking about Hajj. You are talking about Hajj and other issues. But uh, on your behalf, we thank the three of the four uh, paper presenters and uh, wish them all the best. Just like the Hajj Commission had already wished them all, or will wish them all the best, the more. And uh, with this, I would like to hand over to Tambua. Come on, uh, what are you going to, whom are you going to give these two red boxes? Uh, one to Minister, and one to Arasa Idabate. Uh, okay. Hard operations in Nigeria. Yes, sir. <laughs> and grandchildren and all, so that like a relate to the personality of the government. And uh, to Alex Saeedu one of the veteran children uh, officers and former governor, uh, one of the leaders also, great leaders on behalf of the Commission of Eminence is making the presentation, Mr. Allah, for what you are and the country will help. And that's just a token of decision. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Prayer. Where's the new uh, ship? This is the Metro Plaza, which uh, the federal government authorized had commission to buy at uh, 2. Now, 2.4. 2.4 million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because they told us that high commission operations are in dollars. <laughs> we have seen that. Come back, come You said that ten percent of their operations are in dollars. Come back, come Eh? Offshore. I tell them about offshore. No, no, no. They took money 
and gave a hard concession to buy a house because it's Islamic, it's part of Islamization of Nigeria. So I think there's need for hard commission to uh, let people know the sources of funds for this and what other arrangements made to offset the balance. Because they have a budget every year, which is funded by, which, is, uh, by, which they go to National Assembly to defend. But uh, what I want to say is, uh, I know that the federal government did not bring out 2.4 billion dollars and gave National High Commission to buy this edifice. They did not. So let's let's let, let, let that, that case. But where the money came from, meet the chairman, High uh, Commission. So thank you, Malamat. Chairman, I for president who is abroad for his ill health, give him good health and to bring him back to continue with the good work, with the good leadership services he renders for Nigerians. O Allah, guard and guide his eminence to recognize right and act rightly. Prolong his life to the next maybe 70 years, rendering, rendering services to the Muslim Ummah. O oh Allah, we ask you to guide and guard the, the leadership of the Nahkwan so as to place it to a greater height. O oh Allah, all of us are here are your servants with different prayers to you. O oh Allah, grant all our desires in our almighty names. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ar-Rahmanir rahim. Maliki yawmiddin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihdinas sirat al-mustaqim. Sirat al-lazina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-marqubi alayhim wala al-dhalin. Amin. Allahumma anta rabbuna la ilaha illa anta alayka tawakkalna. وأنت رب العرش العظيم ما شاء الله كان وما لم يشأ لم يكن ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم نعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير وأن الله قد أحاط بكل شيء علما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من شر نفوسنا وشر الشيطان ومن شر كل دابة أنت آخذ بناصيتها إن ربنا على صراط مستقيم نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش العظيم أن يشفي رئيسنا محمد بخاري وسائر مرضى المسلمين ربنا اغفر لنا ولوالدنا وللمؤمنين يوم يقوم الحساب اللهم صل على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم أكبر